Yay. Um, my arm hurts. Surviving but lack motivation. Yeah. My issue is that I have, uh, I kind of busted, I would be kind of busted ass yesterday. And, uh, the uh, tennis elbow kicked it and kicked in. So currently dealing with that. Yeah. Hey, I still was muted. So, we we got. Uh, I will just put the text of what I said when I post this up later. So that's what I've been dealing with is uh, colleges, which are supposed to be where you make smart people, and it reminds me that they don't make wise people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, the fact that yeah. my my favorite response at work this week was, "Why didn't you let this student come to the honors breakfast?" Because I teach them at seventh hour. I, I I can't keep a kid from going to a breakfast when I don't teach them at that hour. I mean, I that wasn't my fault. Yeah. So that that's that's been my week this week. Also, the uh, I will say this: the amount of times that I wish a certain substance was absolutely legal in this state has never been higher than this last week. Not that I think it would make it any better for my situation. <laughs> no. But it would make the situation but it would make a situation better for a time. Yeah, but that's not an actual solution. Canon. No. But disassociation is at times helpful. Well, that's Monday anyway for us with uh Holy Winds. No. Yeah. That's that's more distraction than disassociation. I think that's more escapism. Yeah. This association is more um, only physically existing. I should probably know that since I'm in charge of social emotional learning at my school. Oh. I, I'm not, it's not just my department anymore, man. I'm like in charge of math now. I do not know what's mm -hmm. wrong with these people to put me in charge of this. Like, legit, like, okay. I gotta ask both of you. What is your first thought to finding out that I am in charge of social-emotional well-being of multiple children that are not biologically mine? I mean, 
honestly, knowing you, you you have a very practical approach to you would have a very practical approach to that. Mm hmm. Cannon. Lord help the future generations. Yeah, that's th this is what I've been. This is that that's more the ex response I expect because of the demeanor that I have. Like uh, I a hundred percent am very concerned about how my students emotionally are doing this day. I also have the tact of a grizzly bear coming out of hibernation, crashing through your door. True. However, however, my kids have responded very positively to me doing things and asking things, but they have also been very honest with me saying, you are not who I would ever come to talk to for a actual problem unless it was super bad and I needed somebody to disappear. So now I know I am considered a hitman by my students. Nice. I'm not going to dissuade this belief. No, that is literally going to make your life a whole lot easier. A hundred percent. But I'm also not considered kind, caring, and concerned. I am considered uh, sarcastic and will make sure it gets done. Yeah. Also one, that. That... also, one kid used Christina's description of me of I am a teddy bear covered in sandpaper. Yeah. It's arguable about the grit. It, uh, the grit uh, the grit's going to depend on the day. Uh, most days it's 80. Yeah. And sometimes you catch, you catch him on a really, really good day. He's, he's a good 5,000, you know? Just exfoliation. <laughs> but no, that's, I, I've been dealing with that and a lot of my coworkers are not dealing with it. I've had a coworker finally quit quotation mark and now I'm having to help the sub. So I remember how the last time I talked to you, I said I was going to inherit four, uh, four civics classes. Mm -hmm. I did. Mm -hmm. My intern is also helping. Thank God for Andre. He is young and full of energy. He is young and not yet broken by the world. <laughs> no, dude, he came from Chicago. I think that's that's pretty solid that the world's already tried to break him. All right. Yeah, I'll give you that. Somebody once described me as, he's the sandpaper you don't ever want to have to use. You know what? That is 100% accurate. No, because you can be because cannon can be used to burnish or to take the top five layers of skin off quickly and with and and and, oh, and in like two or three passes only and with the with the exact, exact, exact same, exact level, same of level of concern. If you get on my bad side, I'm like a two grid. This is true because I, I was going to say uh, if you get on cannon's bad side, that's your ass. But no, it like I I know that it's sounding negative right now, but honestly, it's been a pretty good month. Like, I I know that most of the time we make the joke, I'm very grumpy. I'm not grumpy. It it's just there's this okay. I've been dealing with stupid, and stupid is tiresome. I am good, but I am tired of stupid. However, I also acknowledge that's not going to stop anytime soon because people are humans. Well, I find this time of the year, I said up front that I was unmotivated. I don't know if it's the closing of the winter to start the beginning of spring or what, but this time of the year, I always lack motivation and lack desire to do anything. It is a little. Uh, it is a little bled. Like this is uh, people that live outside the South. This is when you have winter. In seasons, we have gray. Mm -hmm. It is this gray. Is it, it is gray right now. Gray, humid. Um, and didn't know it could be humid uh, at forty-two. Mm -hmm. Um, the last four weeks, Monday morning, get up and go to work, and it's sunny. 
Friday evening, come home from work, it's sunny. Saturday and Sunday, it rains for the yeah. last month. Yeah. This is the reason why I haven't gotten much done. This is why I haven't gotten to use my surface planer. It's because I'm not going to use that inside of my shed. That is an outside tool. Yeah. Hook your shop back up and go for it. I also do not have the room in my like eight foot wide shed. Not for what I want to run through this thing. Because the second I get a good day and I can get outside and I can do this, not only am I planing down a table surface, I am also creating the mulch to go on top of my garden. I've got a 15 inch planer and the last thing I ran through it was a guitar body 10 years ago. I have a whole bunch of cupped lumber that I'm fine losing about a quarter of an inch of thickness off of. So I have, um, uh, I have a guy at work who is apparently going to give me a, uh, a small drill press. Nice. As well as a single burner forge. Knox, you might have just made a new best friend. So, well, the the drill press, a couple of scrappers came by him looking for scrap, and he they had an old, it's an old Black and Decker drill press. And it's like, does that work? Like, I don't know. Some lady was cleaning out the barn and let us take it. So he plugged it up and it worked when it turned on. So not 100% guarantee that it's going to work like it's supposed to, but hey, it's a chance. Also free. Uh, yeah. And then the, the forge, he has a, he ended up buying a double burner. So he so he says it's just collecting dust and if, and if and if you're gonna use it then we'll uh, then you got no problem with it I'm like yeah I, I no I'll fucking trade uh I'll trade leather work with you if you need you need uh, leather work let me know. Cause he make cause he makes knives. He says I can do I can do some leather work and but I can do and I can do straight lines, but curves are beyond me. I'm like yeah, I, I, I can I'll do whatever you need to do. Nice. So I did have an idea tonight that I don't think we've talked about. We've mentioned our oldest tool on here. But which tool in your possession? And you know what? It, it, this could be taken two different ways. Which tool in your possession is your favorite? Hmm. My Skill 77 worm drive. Skill saw. That is, that is a good saw. Mine's over 20 years old and it's all metal body. The only thing plastic on it is the handle. Is it a sidekick or is it a long body uh, circular saw? It's the long body. This thing weighs in about 12 pounds. Oh, shit. That's one of the old schools. Those are good. <clears throat> Matter of fact, I bought it in 1995. Because, I mean, shortly after that, that's when they started mostly making the sidekicks, wasn't it? Yeah, they went to... Uh... They went to a different gear system in them, and the bodies got a lot shorter. Because, I mean, both my circular saws, the battery-powered and the plug-in, are both sidekicks. They're not the long body. But I've gotten to use uh, Kyle Next Door's dad, Mr. Buddy, has a Craftsman from in the 70s that's a long body, uh, seven and a quarter inch circular saw. 
that thing is a beast. Mine, if you make very many cuts with mine, it will wear you out. But when you place it on the wood and line it up, one-handed cuts are easy because it goes where you push it. Nice. You ain't gotta, you ain't gotta worry too much about straightening off the line whenever you, whenever you can barely pick the fucking thing up. It's kind of like being kind of power, power steering. Power steering. That on you know, most saws, your front handle on it is just a little handle that fits in your palm. Well, this is a C bar that's fastened on top of it, kind of like the bar on top of a chainsaw. That's nice. If you saw my video of cutting blocks, that's what I was cutting blocks with. What about you, Knox? Let's see. My, uh, hmm. I think I cur uh, currently, I'm probably going to, it's probably going to be my, the, my, my belt, my little belt sander. That's one of the Royal B like three inch wide discs and our three inch wide uh belts like the three by 24 belts and uh the six inch disc uh i get i've gotten i've gotten so much work out of it out of that damn thing uh using it for things that honestly i probably could have done by hand but the ability to get them knock get them knocked out quickly and efficiently, uh, and also to sharpen tools, uh, you just got to be really really careful and make sure that you have uh, you you clean the machine first, because uh, that's a, that that that'll cause you a little fire. Yeah, I got a little one inch belt sander that's got a three inch disc on it. I use it to uh, sand the edges of multiple layer leather, like your knife sheaths and things. Mm -hmm. And it's the same way. You go to sharpen a, a chisel that you're using on the lathe or a, or a wood chisel, you better hope that they don't have excess sawdust in it because that mm -hmm. fine powder will ignite quick. No, yeah, I got. I was gonna get that one. Yeah, if that's the one, if that's the one from Harbor Freight, I was gonna get that one, but uh, the Mish was Mish was actually able to find that three inch for uh, <clears throat> on sale. My absolute favorite tool that I possess that I will use more than anything else is what Canon actually bought me, and it is a Dewalt brushless impact driver that thing has been more useful than any other tool I've actually had for the most part. And it is the one that I will grab because the hand feel is right. The weight is right. And it, when I need to put stuff in for most of what I do construction wise, that's the tool I'm going to go to because it's got the oomph to do what's needed. I've driven 12 inch structural screws through four by sixes into two by material and it ain't even looked back yeah it is uh for anyone that's listening the dewalt brushless uh driver and drill uh technology that's been out for the last couple of years is one of the best set of drills and everything like i personally don't know about milwaukee but that's because i i'll be honest i'm not what i'm not getting into a new battery game at this point uh, facts. Uh, like, however, I, I have we DeWalt, were... I have Dewalt and Ryobi for a reason, and that's because that's why I've been given or have. We have we we have Roy we me and my dad have mainly Ryobi, and he has a he picked up a um, 
I think my mom might have got it for him for for, for Christmas one year. Uh, a Bosch drill, <clears throat> which the Bosch drill is smaller, has a smaller chuck. So you so we end up using I end up using the the Bosch for smaller smaller projects, um. But when I was working with Moose, it was we use it was we used all Milwaukee products, and I'm I can I I can't complain to that that uh that impact put in some work. The the one thing I will give Milwaukee is when I picked up their. Uh their drill or battery at like Home Depot or Lowe's. Well, not Lowe's. Because fuck that place. Um, when I've picked it up, it feels really, really light for the amount of power it's going to generate. And Ryobi's kind of getting to that game with the new like little skinny batteries, the little, uh, the small like <laughs> rechargeable lithiums. Yeah. Like, I've been tempted because Home Depot keeps showing them for, like, Supercell, and I'm like, either these are really good or these are really bad. Now, a follow-up question is, what is, we've mentioned our favorite tools, what is your most useful item in your shop? Uh, the, the marking knife you gave me. Really? I used the fuck out of that thing. I use the absolute dog shit out of that thing. That's a hard one to answer, Hewitt. But I guess as a whole, I would have to say my hand tools, like my hand saw and my chisels and hand planes because I can do things with those that you can't do with power tools the most okay my I've already said my most useful is still my favorite is but if it if I take that out of account it is my Milwaukee 25 foot measuring tape the one that I've written a number one on the number two is the same but it's just always grab the number one and I made sure the number that both of them so that I use the same measuring tape on a project no matter what. Yep. But the one that I put a one on is so much more rigid and holds its position. Mm hmm And I use that to measure damn near everything I do. Um, I disagree with Canon. You can do a lot. Uh, you can do everything. Everything that you can do with those hand tools, you can do with a with a power tool. The problem comes in the fact that you have to buy specific tools just to do that with that tool, with that power tool, whereas the, which are, whereas the chisel and the hand tools and, and, and shit, uh, are versatile and you can use them for any, any for anything that you need them for. So um, an example of that, the beam, uh, the beam bookcase I built, I didn't want to drag out all my power tools and dust mm -hmm. up the shop to do it. So I I got out my handsaw and I did a handsaw and pocket hole jig is all I used on that. Let, let, can yeah. we can we all agree that the pocket hole jig is an absolute wonderful thing? Uh, if, you use the right screw, if you use the right screws in it. It will hold just as strong as any other joint I have found. I, I'm with you on that one, Cannon. I pocket hold the shit out of things. I don't have one yet, so. Also, um, dude, I liked mine so well when I moved, I misplaced the one I had, and I went and bought another one. And as <laughs> soon as I got it home, I found the old one. I currently have the old school double block uh, Craig pocket hole jig. I have a Millcraft pocket hole jig. And then I have the newer ones that are like the uh, about six inches long. But they can click to another one. So I got another one for another Christmas. So I have the two of them put together with a Craig clamp. And uh, I, I use the hell out of those. 
Like it's to the point that if it wasn't so expensive, I would buy the Craig pocket hole table uh, for some of the stuff I do. I need to I'll tell you what I need. I need to get I need to get some corner clamps so that uh, I can. I will, let me send you a link later for what M gave me for Christmas. I use them making Vincent's Lego table, mm-hmm. and the uh, the red anodized aluminum ones that are on Amazon mm-hmm. are actually pretty solid. However, uh, they also make those. They also sell them on Timu for a third the price. Yeah. You, just, you just have to make sure you order do do your inch to millimeter conversion so you don't end up with the tiny one. I mean the tiny one didn't exactly wouldn't exactly be terrible for me. Just making those boxes. Making the, the, the dice boxes uh wouldn't exactly it wouldn't that the smaller ones actually wouldn't be te- wouldn't be terrible. I I literally just need them to hold them together while the glue dries to keep them flat. No, there's also like, the other the spring loaded clamps you can get off of Amazon and Timu and all the other vendors. Another trick to hold them while the glue dries. Tape. Tape. Nope. You put a a dot of super glue at the beginning and end of your glue line and then put your wood glue in between and let the super glue hold it until the glue has a chance to dry. Also if yeah. you can buy accelerant, like uh again I, I can send yeah. you a link. It's I'm kind I got of some. Uh, I'm a basic. Now that I've gotten wood colored and black super glue or CA glue, mm-hmm. I've found so many uses for that in my woodworking. Yeah, I have. I have some of the accelerant. You can use a spray bottle with water for accelerant. Really? That's all the accelerant is—is is water. The more you know. Oh. Huh. Hmm. Now, let me ask you, following up with these other two questions, what is the least favorite tool that you have in your shop? And I will start with, it is my scroll saw. I spent nearly $70 on a scroll saw, realizing I should have spent that money on a band saw. Mm -hmm. It is not a bad tool. It is not poorly made. It is just not a tool that you... It's not a tool well, that I have, reg- have a lot of use for. It's not a tool that I regularly use. Scroll saw is designed for thin material. Anything over a quarter of an inch thick is not going to perform well. And on that note, the tool I loathe using the most is a jigsaw. Hard same. Hard same. Here's my deal is I finally invested in a barrel body jigsaw from DeWalt that runs on my same battery system. So uh, I will give you all a review of that the next or when I finally get to use it. But I am also with you all because the scroll saw is just a portable or I should say a jigsaw is just a much more portable scroll saw. I have I've got two scroll saws. And I put a 360 degree blade on one of them. And if I want to do uh, intarsia on leather or in five millimeter plywood, you can't beat it. But you've got to you've got to adjust the tension on that blade right. But like Knox says earlier, a scroll saw is a specific tool for a specific purpose. And if you're using it for more than that, you're not getting your money's worth. now as a follow-up yeah, I, to oh, go ahead Knox. i it doesn't matter how uh it doesn't matter how many times i how much i practice with a goddamn jigsaw i will invariably uh tear uh, tear my tear my material to shit and my line will not be straight. And when you put a 90 degree square across the cut, it's not going to be 90. Correct. 
Now, if I could figure a way, if I could figure a way to mount to some bitch, so that I could turn it upside down, mount it so that it can, uh, so that it can stay where it's gotta be, and I can have, and I can have full control over the over the the material, that would be a different story. But then again, again, I have a I, table saw. I actually watched a YouTube video a couple of days ago where a girl did just that and went to the extent to put a ball bearing roller guide on the top of the blade to keep it from cutting at an angle. She basically mm -hmm. made a bandsaw scroll saw out of a jigsaw. Yeah. Now, I've seen this is so give me give me y'all's opinion on this. Mine is it's hella dangerous. Uh do either of y'all watch Bourbon Moth on YouTube? Mm-mm. Okay, he, he's a pretty decent dude. He does a lot of good work. But when he does his jigsawing, and he has a Festool jigsaw, which Festool is German for highly expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, he actually jigsaws from below. And what, like, he does not get over the blade. He is nowhere near the blade. But he has the, the bottom of the jigsaw on the underside of the piece he is cutting so he has a better view of what the blade is actually cutting through. Mm -hmm. Which I've seen some other people do this, and to me that's hella dangerous, but I get it. But it feels like a bandsaw be a better tool in that situation. Mm -hmm. But the size of everything might not be right. I just sent y'all a link to that video. Cool. So, I mean, what is y'all's idea of doing a jigsaw on the underside of a workpiece? I got enough problems with, uh, I got enough problems with my elbows to, uh, then to try to work where that would, that would, let's see, it, I feel like that would be awkward. That, that's my vibe. I mean, if that's, if that's like, you've done it before, I could get that you're used to it, but to me, that just seems weird kind of like the other thing i asked y'all uh la late last month after we did this last time is how do you feel about running leather through a table saw and to me my first thought is that's gonna bind but uh the, the rest of the guy who was doing it was using leather that was the better part of an inch or better part of a half inch thick but it still seemed like, I don't know how you pulled that off. That's a really, really good table saw. Because my first thought is that's going to bind up like a cloth. Like I said earlier, I've used a scroll saw to cut leather with before. You just got to be, if you want to cut a straight line, you got to be really particular with it. Now, I'm about to pause this. Uh, hold on. No, 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 no. I don't want you to do that. Are you making it fucking awkward? Uh, I'm about to pull up a video for everybody to watch. Uh, if you look on on Discord, there's a video that Emily posted. Oh my god! I'm going through the worst captcha ever. I'm about to not worry about this shit. Uh, it's doing the same thing again. I had a login success while trying to skip things. Okay, so 
I'm about to throw this up on OBS. If y'all would like to look at it on uh look at it on uh Discord. It is a video Emily posted about the uh this it looks like a grill before we delve into the other things that Knox's wife and my wife has sent us. Do y'all see the video I'm talking about within uh, the kitchen table discord? Yes. All right. I have no sound on mine, so it does interrupt us, but just watching the video. Oh yeah. That thing is fucking dope. I know it's a flippable grill. I want it. I mean, like, I'm looking at it. The mechanism to make is not that hard. I just don't want to make it. <laughs> yeah. What do you think, Cannon? Well, it won't come up for me because I don't have a TikTok account and I'm not creating. It should, Valid. It should let you, if you if you click on it, it should let you just watch like, it. I did it. I, I'm not log, I'm, yeah, I'm not logged in. I'm not logged into my my. I don't have to. Let me continue. Let me continue. Yes. Yes. Mine comes up like a picture on the screen that's got two dots that run in in a circle. Mm. Mm. Uh, we will find another way to share this with you later. But it is a mechanism on a grill that allows you to put everything in like a two inch cavity. And then when you move the lever, it flips it over so that you can uh, flip it all at the same time. Okay. And now, gentlemen, now we must look at houses. So I would like to draw your attention to the newest one that was People posted. That our wife do. Uh, the thing that, uh, this is from Knox's wife. So Knox, be ready to steal your wife's water again. But I believe it is 607 Rim Road, Killington. I don't see the rest of Lynn. Yeah, it's the last that I posted it for her. It's the, the 607 Rim Road, Killington, Vermont. Yeah. So, Knox, uh, do us a favor. Read us, read us the thing. Hmm. Only 397,000. Uh, there's a four bedroom, five bath, 3,274 square foot. Uh, the estimated payments is $2,839 a month. It is a single family residence built in 1969 on a little under an acre. Uh, that is way too much. Uh, it's about approximately 120, $121 a square foot. Um, It is a cyclodome. I, I'm looking at image one, guys, and I'm wondering why they shingled over the geodesic dome. Uh, we got a couple of them down here that's all shingled over. It strikes me as weird. It also strikes me as a Final Fantasy villain. Strikes me as an up down, upside down ship's hull. A little bit. Yeah, that's a it, oh. it is it is an odd shape. Picture two is you find its butthole. And that's how you get in. Hmm. Okay, hold oh, on. This is a very oh, odd oh, shape. Hold on. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back. That's a screen door on the left. That is in front of the actual door because there are two doors to enter through here. And when you go to picture three, you can see them. Hmm. I'm not hating the 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 paneling hmm. and the wood floor yet. Mm. It looks like you're walking into a sauna, like an old sauna. Okay, four four does not break your opinion, Knox. Mm -mm. Okay, it gives me the vibe of a a teak ship deck plank, a plank mm -hmm. ship deck. There's a stripper pole. Number five has a stripper pole. And red, well, red shag carpet. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, and the I'm gonna fucking die stairwell. No, it, it actually no. It's a wider spiral staircase, so it's a I might die stairwell. Nox, you know me. I'm gonna fall down that, and it's not gonna be Scatman John playing like the meme. It's just gonna be a funeral dirge. Also, why is there the fucking death point for the stripper pole with stairs on either side? Yeah, yeah. that's a fire. And also, and also yeah, I'm, I'm thinking. I'm thinking that, that is uh, that maybe it, it, we'll find out when we get upstairs what who who's right, Cannon or Hewitt. Uh, However, I don't, uh, I think, my, my I th question my I question th is what's with the block and tackle? Uh, yeah. Also, I think Ken and I might both be right about the pole. What's with the hole in the carpet on the steps on picture six? All right, I'm on six. Oh, uh, fire. Carpet damage, probably. Cigarette. I'm a, no, if it was a cigarette on Shag, that all. Why is there a phone booth? Mm, there's a better picture of it in seven. Like, legit. Why did. Is Rufus here? I will accept. I mean, maybe. Oh, there is water damage along that beam. And there's a sex swing. Where? In seven. In seven. There's a square plank swing hanging from the no, beam. That, that is not a sex swing. You, dude, there's a stripper pole. There's a burn directly underneath this. We're finding weird shit. There's a rattan table holding a fucking vinyl eight player track. that's not well it's a vinyl and eight track player of which there are at least 38 tracks over top of it almost all of them are bgs and there's a floor register mm -hmm. okay eight this place smells like astroglide and regret mm-hmm mm-hmm the carpet is damp, and you know it's damp. Mm hmm Always damp. Nobody and, knows why. And there's too many blankets on that on that sectional for me not to think something's happened. What mm -hmm. are the chains holding up in picture eight? Uh, the, the fireplace. The hood. The 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 hood vent for the fireplace. And there's a. And there's a you mean the indoor fire pit? That they mm -hmm. put a hood over. Uh huh. And there's Correct. a TV mounted on the post, and an RC cola sign. Hmm. Bruh. This there's also another burn over on this. Side. There's carpet on the poles. Yeah. Yes, yeah, there is. I wouldn't touch anything in this bitch. Mm hmm. Everything in this bitch would it would actively try to touch you. The TV has a mini fridge underneath it. Then there's the kitchen with the lawn chairs around the Formica round table. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't hate the table though. Like, okay, I, the wine glass chandelier is a thing. As okay. we step into Mister Rogers' kitchen, let let me ask you though: Does everything here look damp? Oh, absolutely. Okay. It'd be, it'd be 87 degrees outside with zero humidity, and, and everything in here is going to be down. Well, the washing machine and the dryer are inside the kitchen, which is convenient. Yeah, I mean, that's that, that's a thing for that time period. I mean, hell, it was a, the washing dryer was in the, it was in the kitchen at my house. This is... A, the pictures give me that, like, the, this is a choke point between the Do dishwasher. It. What? Do it. Yeah. I need you to look at the partition wall, at the edge of the partition wall next to the refrigerator and notice it's the carpeted. shag carpet. Well, we're entering the back rooms, dude. The shag carpet is slowly taking over this place like a freaking cryptid. Mm hmm Okay. I do not hate this kitchen. The color choice is sus, and it's linoleum, which I grew up with. But there is still a choke point with the dishwasher and the peninsula. Absolutely. However, um, it's 
the bigger kitchen than I had in my house. Yeah. Ooh, hell yeah! There's an outrun, there's an outrun, outrun arcade cabinet. So we walk up from the kitchen into electronic organ and console room with a fucking bar table. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Everything again still looks damp. That's not going to stop. No. What's that? Okay, what is above the organ mounted on those racks above? Are those skis? Slow, skis? slow skis. Okay. The fuck is in 17? What is that? It's a sauna. Or the bath. It's the bathroom. Why does it have so many doors? Um. Oh, Cannon's right. Cannon's right. 18, it is a sauna that's on that, that's on the right. Okay, so... On the right is a sauna. Okay, 19's a fucking mudroom with, uh... Yeah, right. The right side is a sauna, the left side is a bathroom. Um... Okay, there, there's theater seating and shag carpet making up a wall. I feel like we're in a Muppet haunted house. I feel like we're in a in a Muppet. Okay, number 20 is the bathroom that Knox pointed out, which is weird. Then we get a bedroom. With a couch. And a really weird mid-century modern uh, closet. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. 23, I hate. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. 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 Even though there is a very deep, long pelican toilet, my knee is still in that sink. And the wallpaper is so loud that if you look at the vent, the heater vent above you, it looks like that's wallpaper, too. I think this would cause a hallucination if you were in there taking too long of a poo. Mm-hmm. All right, we all right. There's all... shag carpet in the bathroom. Oh, I hate carpet in a bathroom. And that shit's molded. Look at it just underneath there. Okay. God, I know what this place smells like. Okay, then we get number twenty four. We got a bunk on a science uh, on a sci fi ship. Mm-hmm. Hold on. Okay, on twenty four. This is a, look, this is the this is this is the a bunk on a Norwegian research ship. If you look over to the left, the carpeting goes over the gangplank walkway. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. there is mm-hmm. other shag carpet on top of what is below you. Not the same mm-hmm. shag carpet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's a sink in the bedroom. There is a sink in the bedroom, and a big fizzo for you t- for your TV. Yeah. And then, then you look at twenty six, and that is the smallest TV. You're not wrong. I'm feeling like we're now in like a an Antarctic. Uh, mm-hmm. Twenty seven makes me feel like someone tried to make something look like it was from America with never being there. Mm-hmm. I do want to steal that hanging light though. Yeah, that is pretty dope. Pretty dope. Then we get to murder attic. Mm-hmm. Okay, 29 is still Murder Attic. Uh, 30 is looking down from Murder Attic. Mm-hmm. Uh, look, there's a little nice outbuilding. And some Home Depot chairs in a fire pit. Nice. Okay, okay. Um. Okay. I hate this place. Yeah. Where's Mish? 
Uh, I don't know. She's not in here. Tell her I'm both proud and disappointed of, of her at the same time. Okay. Because she 100% completed the job but made my day slightly worse. All right. Uh, let's see. Next one. Next one. All right. Fifty four Seiku Road and Seiku Washington. Uh, which one are you saying? Fifty four Seiku. Nope, that's the Triangle House. I wrote that last time. Uh, the next one I got open is seven six five Prince Canyon Road, Prismo Beach, California. Which scrolling up because we did fifty four seku. Got it. Scrolling up. It's, uh, it's posted it's, on twelve seventeen. Yeah, it's it's posted uh by Emily huh. on twelve seventeen. Okay. So maybe, may, maybe maybe Emily has redeemed redeemed us. Can you I see think she may have can she you may see have received redeemed- can you see it, Cannon? Yeah, I got it. Okay. So, uh, 765 Price Canyon Road, Prismo Beach, California. $3.4 million. Nine beds, eight baths, 5,000 square feet. Built in 1966, approximately $680 a square foot. 6.69 acres. In California? So 6.69 acres and 5,000 square foot house for $3.4 million. That's actually not bad at all. Not at all, especially California. All right. I'm kind so, of digging the initial look, though, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop because I don't trust your wife. $14,000 a year plus 1.6% property taxes. Okay, if you look at number two, it makes sense. Why? Oh, yeah. That's the ocean. Yeah, you're like literally five minutes away from the ocean. Like, I, I thought this was more out towards like the, the deserty part of Eastern California. Mm-mm. No. Okay, number three is the other property line. So, uh, you have a solid chunk of land next to where everybody's up everybody else's assholes in the neighborhood. Yeah, you got the best lot. Of, uh, uh, yeah, that's fu- yeah. You have the best thirty lots in the neighborhood. Looking how tight this those houses are. Okay, four is a decent back view of a ranch. Five's a tree. Uh, five is a tree. Is it a tree? Yes, five is. A- Six lets house. you know that it's it's a tree house because that that is not a very deep house. Oh, there's carpet next to the tree. Seven has me confused. Seven is inside. I know it's inside, but like they did a really good job. They did a really good job, but I'm also asking why. Also, I'm looking at the cabinets. There's one, two, three that are my cabinets because Emily would never use them. Mm -hmm. Not a bad kitchen. Faux wood floor. The living room is I would bust my ass so fucking hard. Hmm. Okay. This house looks like this house looks like an art piece. It does. Ten look at ten guys and tell me your thought huh? process. All right, well you can, you'll save money on shares. I'm tripping over shit. Oh yeah, don't get drunk in this house. I am tripping over shit like th- this would be the Cthulian tree house, and I can see where there used to be a closet. I can see why there ain't no furniture in the house. 
Okay, uh, 11 has a death step. Thirteen's not bad, but there's another bit of the tree that's a bench. Hey, no tree in the bathroom. Oh, well, I'm not interested in that. Uh, Fifteen is death stairs. Mm -hmm. Pretty nice porch in sixteen. Then we get to good old days, the uh, which I'm assuming is supposed to be like a bar. Oh my god! Okay, mm. okay, number eighteen. I'm just hoping not to find cast iron on the wall. I'm 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 digging it. Okay, on twenty I'm still digging it. I wanna kitchen steal area's kinda, kitchen area is kinda kitchen area is kinda small for me. I want to steal the hutch that's in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is not a big kitchen for a place that looks this big. Okay. Uh, that, 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 that table in the kitchen is getting put into my shop. Because it's a, it's a raisable table. Oh, yeah. That'd be and, nice. I put, and I'm putting an island there. Uh, I'm noticing one problem. It seems like none of the bedrooms' walls go all the way to the top. Yeah. Uh, saw shell space that was built up. Okay. Uh, looking at 25, guys. Hmm. My only complaint is if you're going to do a claw foot tub, get a full-sized one. That's, yeah. a that's a shower tub or my legs are hanging out of it tub. Yeah. Kind of like the vanity. Yeah. Do not like 27. Oh, you mean the the, the part of the yard that Hewitt falls to his death? Like no, no, every no. Every no. three days? No, no, no. The part of the yard that's higher than my house. Like, I understand terrace and being built on a mountain. I just really... It, it's a drainage thing for me. Hmm. Hmm. Kind of... Okay, I kind of dig the hippie couch in number 30. That is the nap couch. Next to the nap yeah. chair. Yeah, 29 is where I'm spending all of my time. So, yeah, this area is where I'm spending all of my time. Little, little wood fire stove. Looks like a, another kitchen. So, it looks like the Good Times has, like, two separate... A mother-in-law suite? Well, not just that. I mean, this looks like it was used as a rental. So, like you and someone else might be sharing the main building. Looks like it was an old country store at one time. Mm hmm 34 has an outside denim couch. Nice. 35 has our fourth living room with another kitchen. I don't think this is still inside the same building. No. This is another outbuilding. I think it's I think it's multiple. It's multiple buildings on this. Like I don't dislike any of these. Mm -mm. Like this one, this one, this one is really quaint. I, I actually quite like it. I kind of oh, I like forty one. Forty one is the most normal looking of all of them. Including the UFO baby high chair. Another pretty standard kitchen. The UFO baby high chair. The heater, you mean? No, no, no. Look at 44 and look over at the left-hand side by the sofa. Oh. Okay. Hmm. 
just going through. Uh, I really like 49. Hmm. Okay, uh, another bedroom, living room for 50. It's both. Fifty three is the most lived in space in any of this. Mm hmm. Fifty four is the bathrooms. Yeah. Fifty five is a tiny house. Yeah. Now, even the tiny house is kind of quaint. Like I'm, I'm not hating any. Oh, sixty two cannon. Holy crap, it's a Flintstones house. You cowards. You cow I'd say that's a cave. Yep. My thing is these cowards are not showing me the inside of it. Because then we switch to the driveway. And then it just goes to like a bunch of drone shots. I I don't hate this place. Minus that it's minus is three point four million and in California. I mean, for being in California, it's to be it's being three point four million for this big. I mean, we, we could make it work. Oh yes, you turn you turn good old days into into a like a reception hall kind of thing. And oh. like a saloon, a saloon start, like a big, kind of like uh, they did, they did the barn for that. They had Moose and Claire running. Yeah. Also, I know if the three of us were left alone with a large bit of property to build what we wanted on it, we'd still get in trouble. Mm hmm. Even by Louisiana, Mississippi laws, not just uh, California. All right. Let's knock out one more before we're done. And I'm on 630 Riverside Drive. St. Cloud, Minnesota. Yep. Gonna go to Minnesota. Um, There's a turret. There is a turret. There is a, there is a, there is a 47.3% chance that your wife is about to eat up any goodwill that the good, uh, that the good place just gave us. Yeah, I understand this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Externally, do we have any complaints? Other than uh, I, I, I ain't roofing that. Uh, there is apparently only one picture. Is there only one picture? They took all the other ones down, so uh, I guess this one doesn't count. I got a street view. Mm -hmm. Okay, the street view is way creepier. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It says it's closed, so it's uh, sold on in 22. Oh, okay. All right, let's switch to a different one. Oh, it's the Roundhouse. Uh, 26 Coastline Drive, Enum, South Carolina. What? I automatically hate this. The fuck? Oh, no, Knox, no, I know what happened. Is that above or below that one? Um, Two below. Two below. I farted in this house in a past life. This is what's happened. I mean, obviously. $595,000. Three bedrooms. Bedroom, 20, 26 coastline. 26 coastline. The, yes. The very fat house. 1,960 square feet. Built from 1977, $304 a square foot, single family residence. Mm. I don't like it. Mostly because there is no edge to the roof versus fat boy side of the house. And also, this could just be me. I don't think it is. 
this house is crooked. I don't like the, the driveway. Look at all these. Look at the two houses on either side of it right here at this. Uh, what looks like a, a nice little on the lake community or on the bay outlet mm -hmm. or inlet community. Mm -hmm. They have nice driveways. This is a Louisiana road driveway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The grass has grown over. Best part of this property so far is picture number two. Okay. There is a benefit. Three is not bad either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm on five and they've not shown me the inside of this thing yet. Six. No. Seven is another dock. You mm -hmm. can see where the rest of that road that went around the house has been overgrown by grass because you can see the boat ramp. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're on patio. We got Shay's lounge and a glass top table on your little kidney bean from the 80s patio set. It's cute that you think that there's glass on that table. There's probably not. There's there definitely is. not. Stairs. <laughs> with caution lights and it's crooked and that's visqueen <laughs> okay guys could any of the three of us fit in this bathroom hey you shit and brush your teeth at the same time you might be able to shit and wash your balls at the same time <laughs> I probably could, considering I'm currently living in a camper and my bathroom's about half that size. Okay, so there's reconstruction going on. That is what 11 lets me know. Okay, 12. Yep, it's the Miskatonic University logo. Neat. As we've now joined an esoteric order. Mm -hmm. so, so this house will definitely not try to kill you. I'm looking at, I'm looking at 13. There's a random handrail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now we're on to a different set of stairs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a water heater in the floor. We're back nice. to the outside. Hey, <laughs> sheet rock, uh, 15 sheetrock's almost done. <laughs> we got the picks tubing to the side, water heater in the middle of the floor. All right, but go to 16. Th th those mud lines are pretty fucking clean, though. Yeah. Uh, speaking of things that are not that. that um, that This is a very crooked picture. Go to, go to 16. Look at where the wood meets the roof. Yeah, it's immediate. That's why I mentioned earlier, like, there is no Eve. No, that's not what I'm talking about. Look at the almost crenellation in the wood underneath where the roof meets it. You mean where it bows? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why I don't like this. There is so much water damage in this thick boy. Mm-hmm. And then we go back to, but look at the property, though. Uh-huh. Okay, 18 might be the best shot of the property. Yeah. That grass is well manicured. Mm. Ah, shit. Yeah. Okay, let's see. I still have 85 Heights, 306 New Hope, and 16 Johnson. Yeah, 13 Lime Kiln. Which one? 13 Lime Kiln, which is one between Riverside and Coastline. Hold on, let me look. Riverside. Oh, Lime Kiln. All right, let's knock this one out. This, you know what? Yeah. Yeah. Let's try to end on a more positive note. Cannon. $879,600. Cannon, do you want to live in a in a limestone wall? 
I hadn't seen the inside yet. Okay, two's not bad. How much is this again, Knox? Eight hundred seventy-nine six. Mm. One bed, two bath, twenty-four hundred square feet. Okay. Three is another outside picture of a Flintstone house. So is four. So is five. Six. Six, it snowed, but six. Okay, tell me if I'm wrong. Six looks like the bathroom at a zoo. Yep. Or the entrance to the, entrance to the herpetology section. Exactly. Like, it, it's, yeah. This is okay. where the, all, all the nocturnal amphibians are. All right, I like seven. I like the chairs. You're never going to sit there, though. Okay. Nine is... Nine is messing with my idea of geometry. It is non-Euclidean, correct. Okay, 10 makes it better. So uh, here's the deal. No one's sitting at that little entrance area with those two chairs up there unless, like, there's a big party and you got to get the fuck away from everybody. Yeah. So, uh, so unless, so what you mean is unless there's a big party. Like, those are the chairs Mama tells you. Why is there an Adirondack outside chair in number 11 underneath the stairs? Why not? Because you could put the comfy leather chairs that are upstairs in the faux sitting area where you could sit and watch the fire. Okay, yeah, I'll give it that. I do like the floor, though. There is the I'm going to fall backwards sofa. A big fucky chicken. Where's the big chicken? 13. Okay, I hadn't gotten there yet. I was on 12, which has like the Bose home entertainment speaker system. Mm -hmm. the, the, again, another sitting area that serves no purpose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That looks like the most uncomfortable sofa next to the fireplace that you never use. Mm -hmm. That's a big fucky chicken. I don't hate the house, but I'm very much judging some of the aesthetics of the furniture within it. Mm -hmm. But they really want you to see that chicken. Mm -hmm. That coffee table don't go in this room. I, I kind of like the coffee table, though. I do as well, but it don't fit in this room. No. Hey, we got an Ikea shelving unit. And we got access to the sewer line in the floor. Man, they really like this one room. I mean, I think this is the living room. Yeah, but there ain't even a TV. Like, the, the, the bull skull is where a TV would go, I think. But that's not a comfortable mm -hmm. place to sit. Number 26. The Adrionic Chair is the lookout post for the basement. Okay, I'm on 20 right now. That is a tiny ceiling fan. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know they're using the, 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 the privacy divider as a headboard, but Yeah, I, things are going that, that my that pillow is going to be on the floor oh, 7 so, seconds after I sit 7 seconds after I sit down on the bed, much less lay down. And, oh no, and the thing's going to the thing's going to get folded flat and fall the fuck down on you while you're sleeping. Yeah. Plus Okay. I like the shower. I I like the bathroom. I I hate that there's a mirror at the foot of the bed and that the window is cockeyed. 
Okay, that shower is really dope. I forgive mm -hmm. them partially. Because there's also the I just need to sit down for a minute bench. There's the creepy storage closet next to the commode. Mm -hmm. There's the kitchen again. 24 is a repeat picture. 25. Oh, nope, yep, that, that, nope, Cammy's right. <coughs> that, that is, is the, that is the, that is the watch chair for the horror that lives under the, that lives under the stairs. This is where you sit with a shotgun all night, making sure that which comes for flesh does not get out tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a weird-ass fireplace. Mm. With a very peculiar slot. Because, like, there's the whole kitchen. Is it, like, supposed to be a... Okay, hold on. There's a pantry. Hmm. Okay, I don't care about the rest of this. Very standard, very, uh... Very whatever kitchen. There's... Okay, so the pantry. Jarringly modern. The not, kitchen is, jar, is jarringly modern. It's not just... Jar, everything else. It's not just jarringly modern. It is, uh... Everything else is giving me Hacienda vibe, but the rest of this is telling me that I need to sing about uh, I Gotta Let It Go in the kitchen. Well, I, I'm getting very... The rest, of the, the, re the rest of the house is is, is very... It, it gives Hacienda vibes. Uh, the kitchen area says that mayonnaise is spicy. Then we get a zoom in from the same previous picture. Okay, hey, you have a nice serving tray and some Tobin James. Okay, I repeat. Why? Okay. Can you give me a better picture of... Okay, there's a picture of the door. But this this weird fireplace, like, is it supposed... Like, it's not a wood fire pizza oven. Is it, it might be. Is it supposed to, like, at least look partially like a cook fire and, like, you have this divot in it so you can... Mm -hmm. Don't know. Thirty nine is another weird. Yeah, you got 30, 30, 39 is that throne room that uh that throne room that uh that the hollow that created for data whenever he was taken off taken over by the alien intelligence in that one episode of Star Trek Next Generation. Okay, we got a weird fireplace that I don't hate, but then we have the outside table and chairs on a rug. Mm hmm. The patio set. Yeah, with with a really weird railing that's too high to be a, a chair rail. Mm -hmm. Track lighting, though. And is that a fucking door that opens up to the, like, the balcony over it so you can go like, yes, peasants. Oh, and there's a track slide to, to block off where the, the metal patio furniture is. It looks like it's a little privacy screen. Oh, we got our first TV. Oh. Mm. Then we zoom in on the fireplace like it's going to consume our souls. Cannon, you've been really quiet. This makes me happy that I elected not to go to architectural school when I graduated high school. Okay. Look because look. this is an abomination to the world of architecture overall. Okay. Look at 44. Ignore the fireplace. Ignore the completely beige stucco everything. Ignore the very not managed cables and other bullshit. I kind of like the door. Even though it doesn't, or it probably has a white porcelain handle that looked like it didn't have a handle. I kind of like the door. Yeah. Yeah. The view's not bad.
<laughs> my whole thing about this is they said it blends with the limestone hills that are there. Everything on the outside of it stucco made look like limestone. Pretty yep. much. Then you got another picture of the like, and then we got another IKEA cabinetry, and then we got the ladder in the the mud room slash utility room. Mm -hmm. That goes up to your balcony. Oh, that goes up to the murder balcony. Mm -hmm. I hate this. <laughs> it's. This is so weird. Okay, and then number 51, we're back to the entrance. And a, a yoga spot? A yoga spot. In the description, it lists it as a sleeping loft. Mm -hmm. Oh, fuck that. Okay, there's there's not a bad pergola. That is way smaller in 57 than the other pictures make it look. Uh, old school ladder onto the roof. Um. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm just clicking through the rest of these pretty quickly. There's, yeah. there's a dude in 71. And pumpkins. Oh, and then a map. Bedrooms on the first floor. Massive family room. Yeah. Workout room, seating room slash entrance. Kitchen. I don't like this. No. No. I'm. I'm good. I'm good. This is the this is the last one. My wife Would gave not us. Recommend. My my wife gave us a good one. Your wife and my wife also gave us terrible ones. Mm -hmm. Let's see where these other ones they they left for us. Okay, another one that only has one picture, but it's also uh, several acres of just land. Okay, that one that I opened, we already looked at, and then there's another geodesic dome, which I don't enjoy. Oh, boy, guys. Excuse me. Whew. Well, that was a that was something. So, uh, either y'all got any recommendations? Uh oh, did I lose everybody? No, staying in school, kids. Okay, I meant like anything you've been reading or watching recently. Um, no, not really. Just been hitting random YouTube videos here and there. Still binging Stargate Atlantis. I've been watching Laura Kampf up, uh, renovate a, like, 200-year-old house in Germany. And the construction requirements that are different between us and Europe is ridiculous. But it's really neat to watch her doing that because since it's so old, she has to, she can't use like regular drywall in it. She has to use a clay drywall so that it will resemble the original interior of the building. And it's actually kind of neat. Also, it's bullshit that you, know, you can't use what you want to use in the house, but it's also kind of neat. Yeah. The other recommendation I got is a Netflix series right now called Delicious in Dungeon. Watch it. 
it's so stupid. I love it. It is a level of fantasy absurdism uh, or of acceptance. Like everybody acknowledges this is stupid and weird, but we're doing it. It's just the way everything. It's like everybody with the dungeon of the mad mage in D and D. It's like, oh yeah, it's there, and we just randomly people go down there to explore, it and sometimes they die. I'm gonna go grab donuts. You want some? Like that's the level of mundane some of the nonsense they're doing is, but it's a, uh, it's kind of a high fantasy. Oh, sorry, excuse me. High fantasy uh, foodie anime, where like the mm -hmm. animation quality goes way up when the food shows up, like Ghibli. So that that's what I've been watching. I'm just, you know, honestly, I haven't really been watching much of anything. Nick yeah, Cannon said random YouTube videos. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, we are hitting the about hour and a half mark. So, uh, you can catch us on uh, Mondays when we stream Holy Winds or. Every other the Wednesdays with Redwell Chronicles and the weekend when we do podcasts. You can also find us at teambonusaction.com, created by our very wonderful Frecky V. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Blue Sky, Threads, YouTube, we are Team Bonus Action. And on Twitter, we are at bonus underscore team. And Knox, since you're here. I appreciate y'all hanging out with us even until next time, folks. Don't let you meet loaf. Thank you for tuning in to another bonus roundtable podcast brought to you by Team Bonus Action. If you'd like to find more out about us, you can go to our website at teambonusaction.com or you can check us out on Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube as Team Bonus Action or on Twitter at bonus underscore team. And since Knox is not here, don't let your meatloaf.